My entitled neighbor trespassed on my property, threatened to harm my family and towed a police vehicle after I called the cops on him. Here is what happened. Subscribe to Ripe on YouTube and hit the bell to turn on notifications. I have seen stories here about crazy neighbors, but I think mine might take the price for the most insane one. He had always seemed like he had a few screws loose in the past because he always liked to come out and yell at people for seemingly no reason. Sometimes it was just to insult how their property looked or even what they were wearing. From what I gathered after all of this, he did not actually have a mental illness or disability. He was simply just insane and did all of this knowing full well what he was doing. I knew this because based on what he ends up doing later in the story, he was forced to undergo a mental examination. I think at least I am going to label this guy as the worst neighbor in Bratislava, Slovenia. I think most places have the same kind of rule that people cannot just come on your property without permission. If you tell them to leave, they have to or they can get arrested. One day, neighbor decided to come out of his house and onto my property to yell at me. He was going off about how my built-in sprinklers made the lawn look stupid and that it would cause his lawn to look bad in return. Then he started digging into how ugly the flowers my wife planted were. And by the way guys, sorry for my voice still sounding a little bit weird, I caught a nice little cold in Europe, so I hope I am better very soon. Either way, well, that was a little bit too far and my wife basically told him to F off and get away from us. That drove him even crazier and said that he was not going to leave the property and before he did he was gonna make sure that he killed my wife. I made her get inside the house, lock the door and call the police. I had no idea what this guy was actually capable of but I was not going to let him get near her no matter what. So finally the police arrived and let me into my house so they could talk to both of us away from the neighbor. We explained that he refused to leave the property and even threatened to kill my wife. You would think that this is the main part of the story and he goes to jail or something but it actually isn't and things got even crazier. The police only sent two officers in a car and both were in the house with us. That meant the neighbor was outside unsupervised and he decided to do something even crazier. He had gotten some rope that I guess was in his garage and tied the police car to his own car. When one officer looked out the window he could see that their car was being dragged away by the neighbor. I have no idea what was going through his head and it was probably the main reason he had to get a psych evaluation afterwards. The only thing I could gather him saying was that since he paid the tax dollars the police got, he deserved their car. So we all ran outside when we saw this and it was clear the police were less concerned about him trespassing and more that he was taking their car and starting to go down the block. They told him to get out of the car and honestly I'm amazed that he listened to them. I would have expected him to keep going knowing his history of not really being able to stop. You could tell the officers had never seen anything like this happen before and called in for another unit just in case they needed some extra hands with this guy. When he got out of the car nobody could tell until he got closer that he had a knife and started running towards the officer with it. This crazy guy was actually going to attack a police officer because he would not let him steal the car. He luckily did not manage to hurt anybody and the other officer was able to quickly take out the taser and shoot the neighbor with it. Police here don't really pull out guns like in other parts of the world I've heard of. Anyway, he was on the ground and everybody was just looking at him very confused. Another police car came and they stuck him in the back of it to arrest him for attempted assault of a police officer. He was also being charged with attempting to steal a police car, trespassing and threatening with a deadly weapon. Since he did in fact have a knife, the threat he made against my wife was more serious than if he just said it. They knew because of his behavior they had to get him evaluated to see if he could even stand a trial. If he was mentally ill and not able to control himself or see right from wrong, they would not or could not send him to jail. They would probably send him to some kind of hospital to get the help he needed. I really thought that was going to be the case, but the results showed that he was perfectly fine. Even in court it was like looking at a different guy because we had only seen him yelling and acting kind of crazy. He knew exactly what was going on and did not really have much of a defense when it came to the things that he had done. 
They found slight traces of drugs in his system, so there is a thought that maybe he had an altered state because of that. Either way, he was gonna be fully held responsible for what he did and let me just tell you, messing with the police here is not a smart idea. Many people see them as heroes and trying to stab one for no reason will not make you look very good. He was going to jail for the things he did with the officer and the car without a doubt. The real question came into what was going to happen when it came to the things that caused the police to get called in the first place. It never looks good when a larger man that had a weapon threatens a woman. They were dropping the trespassing because at this point it really did not matter. Instead he was given two extra years in jail on top of the five he got from the assault and theft. There are two ways that courts can handle this when people are arrested for two separate things. They can either say that he can serve the two sentences at the same time, meaning he would only do five years and two of them would count for both crimes. Or instead he would have to do seven. They added them together and made him serve the two crimes separately. There might be crazier stories about neighbors out there, but I have yet to see one. Please let me know if you like my story about my neighbor. I am mostly happy that he is in jail and hopefully not coming back to the neighborhood. It's peaceful without his yelling and I hope that he can control himself in the future. I don't know if he needs to get help for drugs or just control himself better, but he has 7 years to figure that out. I have a feeling he will not be my neighbor when he gets out though. And yeah, ripe stars time and time again, drugs prove to be some of the worst enemies a human can have. Just a few days ago here in Thailand, a guy high on drugs came to a daycare and killed over 20 children. That's what drugs, and in this case maybe, but it's not confirmed, some kind of mental illness can do to you. Either way, let's continue with the stories. The next one is titled, Revenge on an Incredibly Annoying Neighbor. My kids and I moved houses in March, day two in my new house, and I tripped over a broken paver. Did not break anything, but I still needed surgery, a three-night hospital stay and a full leg brace for two weeks. While I was in the hospital, my partner, a former ex-partner now reconciled, it's complicated, Martin, dad, sister, bestie and her wife had formed an emergency team. They kept my kids and pets safe and fed and finished the unpacking. Dad and Martin did a little garden work, removing the broken paver and laying some old fence posts along the fence where the next door's dog was digging through. Week 1 I hobbled to the letterbox and met next door's landlord who my partner has nicknamed the Bucket Woman. She immediately told me to bring my bins in by 9am because it made the street look messy. She demanded that I move the posts because the grass would grow through to her side. I explained the reason for the posts and said that once the holes were filled in, let me know and I would move them. And by the way, hello to you too. Week number one, bin day, 9-10am. The bucket woman banged on my door, I am still in PJs and leg brace. She of course complained about the bins. I said my bestie is coming by later to help me dress, I could not do feet, I would bring the bins in later. When Bestie pulled up, she had to park out front because my bins were in the driveway. And by the way, I checked. The council bylaws don't have a deadline for bringing in bins, but next, Martin got temporary approval to WFH at my place. I got home and Martin was escorting the bucket woman off the property. The bucket woman thought nobody was home and tried to sneak in to move the posts. Martin said the next time he calls the police. A few weeks ago the police arrived, Martin was at work and said a concerned neighbor called about a man and woman having a domestic dispute and the man was destroying the fence. The bucket woman is out the front watching, once they are satisfied I am okay and there's no damage, I explain about the last week and show them the security footage. Later I see them speaking with the bucket woman, she is not happy and she goes inside. I was working nights and the police visit had taken up a lot of my precious sleeping time, I was fuming. But then the penny dropped, the bucket woman just let herself in while the tenants were at work. So then I spoke to the tenants and I was blunt. I asked if they were okay with the bucket woman being in the house while they were out and said that I had seen her there at least once a week. In a nutshell, they were not okay with that and later one of the guys came around with a box of chockies, thanked me and said they were moving out right away. 
The bucket woman was furious at me. She says I made her tenants leave and got her in trouble with the rental agents too. She told me I made the street look messy and hang underwear on the washing line, so how will she get new tenants? I wanted so badly to tell her to get off my lawn. Update to the story, I just got off the phone from the council. Someone has complained that I removed a protected tree from my property. And yeah, I'm going to enjoy this. Update number two, I spoke to the council again. The complaint is definitely that the tree was removed, the tree is definitely still there and visible from the street. The council are sending someone to inspect the tree, Martin and I will be there armed with reports and photographs. I did my bit for democracy and the nice neighbors from the other side were in the queue to vote ahead of me, they took their own photos of the storm damage to the tree and oh my god it was way scarier from their side of the fence. I have added their photos to the file, next door don't have any problems with the bucket woman trespassing but he's retired and she works from home. The bloke hates her guts and is happy to keep an eye on our backyard when we are out. Part 2 of the story, first thing we did was add more security cameras so now most of the property is covered. And also we were shocked to see how often she was coming onto our property and looking through our windows. I felt sick to my stomach. The reason she knows what is on my washing line is because she is coming into our yard and checking. Not gonna lie, I had a bad period where I just blamed myself for bringing everyone else in the household into this. We spoke to the kids and they find her annoying but not creepy if that makes sense. We are checking in regularly with how they are coping. Martin hand delivered a letter to the bucket woman telling her she is not allowed onto our property and any communication about neighborhood issues should be directed to my solicitor, card attached to the letter. Since then Martin has diligently checked the security footage and reported every instance of trespass on the police non-emergency line. A few days later we had a visit from the police. The bucket woman rang triple zero and said I had a dangerous dog which attacked her and she claimed was injured getting away from the dog attack. The police checked our house and yard and did not find a dangerous dog. They did find two house cats, a house rabbit and the disemboweled corpse of a catnip mouse which was not taken for forensic examination. Martin then pulled the security footage and I've been asked not to describe it in detail but I cannot decide what was funnier. The footage itself or the sight of the police officer trying to keep a straight face. Also if you do plan to trespass on your neighbor's property and you startle easily, say at an angry indoor cat, it's always quicker to run through an open gate than a closed one. So the petty revenge component, I remain a free woman, little cat is not declared a dangerous dog and gets her favorite tuna treat, lots of head pets and a new catnip mouse. Martin gleefully adds another report of trespass. And finally, bucket woman looks like an idiot. Our next step was to replace the old side gate with something more secure. That of course led to more escalation from her side and more petty revenge on ours, but cutting off her access to the backyard still has not stopped the bucket woman. We still find her in the front yard looking through our windows, including our, mine and Martin's bedroom window. Our front yard is a quagmire when it rains so we regularly find her tracks. Martin has taken to spite cleaning the garage every time he sees her tracks, the fence posts lying along the shared fence have turned into our hard waste pile. Every time he catches her trespassing he adds a bit more junk to the pile. It's probably driving her crazy but there's nothing she can do. And thank you to everyone who suggested putting something interesting in the window for the bucket woman to look at. I found some simple and elegant window clings that are beautiful to look at and should frustrate the bucket woman at the same time. We have picked our favorite design and next step is Martin will measure up the windows and order the custom sizes. We figure eye level for him should defeat the bucket woman even if she stands on tippy toes. Revenge that is both petty and elegant. I like it. But I still think I will order some replica huntsman spiders just in case. Update, Martin went shopping on the way home and he has brought home a motion activated water sprayer and a couple of rubber snakes. This may just be the most romantic present I've ever received. Tomorrow he installs the sprayer and measures up for the window clings. My brother does not want me to tell you all what a kind and generous person he is being, but right now I'm sorry for trying to feed him to a monster when I was 4 years old. If you are reading this, I'm really glad that monster in the wardrobe did not eat you. 
Tuesday afternoon, Bullseye, part number 3, this is why we had motion activated lights installed. I meant to share this one a while ago, but I got sick for a few weeks and did not have the energy. After the dog attack, our old side gate started to wobble alarmingly, almost like someone ran into it full tilt while escaping an angry house cat. So we reluctantly decided to demolish it knowing that would leave us more open to bucket woman visits, but since the new gate was due to be installed later that week, we reasoned nothing that bad could happen. This is also the story of how wrong we were. Martin demolished the old gate on Sunday afternoon, neatly stacking the remains along the side of the garage near the bins. Later that night, about 11pm, I took my bucket of kitchen scraps out to the green bin. I did not bother turning on the light because I was intending a quick trip out and in and there was enough available light. It's the middle of winter and close to freezing and I was not planning to stay out there very long. I waddle out into the dark wearing my dressing gown and slippers. I had just reached the bins when I heard a noise in the yard behind me. I called out, who is there? No answer. I call out again, who is there? This time a shapeless figure silently came towards me. I hurled the scraps bucket at it. The figure screamed, so I screamed louder. Since my brother was not available, I grabbed one of the bins and tried to use it as a shield, but I tripped and fell over the old gate. And yeah guys, it sounds like OP is dealing with the Enderman. What a horrific story. Anyway, then the lights came on and everyone flooded outside. I was sitting on my ass, looking up at the bucket woman, now wearing my kitchen scraps, babbling and waving some papers. Disclaimer, I did not score a direct hit with the bucket, the contents just splashed her. However, Martin grabbed a cricket bat and growled at her in a voice that would have frozen Hades. Get out now! The bucket woman tossed her papers in the air and fled, shedding potato and onion skins as she ran. And okay, my irrational brain insists on replaying it like that, even though I know I only splashed her. My daughter rang triple zero, the neighbors rang and so did the bucket woman. She said she would come to serve legal documents on me and I had supposedly assaulted her. The police then took the papers away but left scraps. So I limped away from this encounter slightly wounded but still a free woman and triumphant. When I am old and in a nursing home, the memory of the bucket woman with my leftovers gobbled on her leg will still make me smile. But wait, there's more. Sunday afternoon, Martin looked out the window at the remains of the old gate and I could see an idea forming. Then he disappeared. I next saw him humping the old gate across the backyard and neatly piling the remains up against a shared fence on top of the old fence posts. He came back in and said he had moved the hard waste pile because it really is an eyesore for the rest of the street and the bucket woman doesn't like it when we make the street look messy. The words hoist and petard spring to my mind. Part number 4, Saturday at OP's house. The kids were all off doing their own thing, mostly involving mud and or a football. Martin and I had brekkie which included a liberal helping of YouTube videos of motion activated sprinklers. Then Martin headed out to install our motion activated sprinkler. After about 10 minutes, Martin stuck his head around the door and said that he had invited his friend Andy around to help test it. I am decent, so that's all good. Andy pulls up and the pair of them start, um, scientifically testing it for the optimal settings. The next time I look up from my reading, Terry from across the road has joined them. Judging by the hand gestures and laughter, they are telling Terry about the sprinkler. This is when I decide to go for a short walk. Exercise helps me think and I have a nasty HR issue to resolve on Monday, I hope. When I get back, Sam has joined the group. Martin, Andy and Terry look like they've been showing Sam how the new sprinkler really works. All four of them wave to me and I head inside. Martin follows me and says they are going to Bunnings. He thinks they have worked out how to place a second sprinkler so it blasts anyone looking into the front window. But people can still reach the front door if they stick to the path. Martin and Andy get in the car and drive off. Terry and Sam go home and eventually the car backs into the driveway and Martin opens the boot. There are two robo sprinklers plus some extra hose and some other stuff I cannot identify. Andy puts on in the boot of his car and then comes back to help Martin install our second sprinkler. Terry and Sam also came back and all four of them, um, scientifically adjusted the settings so that legitimate visitors can approach the house without a squirting, but window peepers will get hit. 
In theory, the bucket woman could defeat the sprinklers by just turning the garden tap off. But she looks to be in her 60s and is built like the original, so we don't think she has the ninja skills to reach it. Martin, who is about 20 years younger than her, tried it and gave up, possibly due to excess laughter after someone called out, the bouquet residence, the lady of the house speaking, from the bedroom window. Andy, who is about 25 years younger than her, could do it, but discovered that there is a very small margin of error before Darth Sprinkler activates. So, we might have lost the element of surprise. Most of me does not mind if the bucket woman has seen the sprinklers of doom being demonstrated if it makes her stay away from the damn windows. But part of me would like the smug satisfaction of hearing a shriek and the sound of Darth Sprinkler going off in the night. So Tuesday afternoon, Bullseye, part 5, the bucket woman was actually the sprinkler's second victim. The first one was Max, short for Glutus Maximus, the neighbor's cat who has hit his morning pee on my rosemary plant, but Max strolled across the sensor and Robo Sprinkler 2 activated. He got the shock of his life when that morning the garden peed back. He ran back to his own yard like he had been fired out of a cat cannon. And if someone here gets the Postal 2 video game reference, then please answer in the comments. Anyway, Robo Sprinkler 1 fired on the Bucket Woman on Tuesday afternoon, Martin was WFH, which I still know what that means, but at the back of the house and only knew something happened when the fluffy couch potato cat let out an unearthly howl and tried to hide between Martin and the chair he was sitting on. He got to the front room just in time to see the bucket woman disappearing behind the fence, so he went to check the security footage. I got a text asking if I wanted the good news or the bad news first. I was having a crap day, so I opted for the good news. I got two words back, meaning got her, and then I asked for the bad news and he texted, sorry about your rosemary. Oh, I only have two plants in the front garden that I really care about and that rosemary is one of them. It's flowered nearly all winter and I like watching the bees. When I got home, there was a group of people outside our house. I started to worry, thinking something terrible had happened. But I realized they were sprinkler devotees and in the middle was my partner performing the dance of his people. This account has been pieced together from looking at track marks and observing the triumphant dance of the sprinkler people. It seems that the bucket woman entered through the gate and headed towards the bedroom window, crossing Robo Sprinkler 1's sensor. Robo Sprinkler 1 fired on the intruder and scored a direct hit before starting on its arc. The bucket woman was startled and ran back towards the gate, but Robo Sprinkler had started its return and hit her a second time. She was startled again, denoted by some high leaps and exaggerated shrieking in the dance, changed direction, ran past the gate and body slammed my poor defenseless plant before finding the gate and running back next door. The triumphant dance makes no mention of bees. But I picture a bunch of worker bees turning up to work at the rosemary plant the following day and going, bloody hell, what happened here? The interesting thing is that the robo sprinkler seem to have had a deterrent effect. This happened on Tuesday, today is Monday and she has not visited since. We see her on the cameras pacing up and down out the front but she is staying out of our garden and away from the windows. Martin came down with man flu on Wednesday and a close family friend died on Thursday, so this has been a welcome respite. Nor have we been visited by authorities following up allegations I am keeping unlicensed bees or that my fluffy couch potato is really the hound of the Baskervilles. It's as if a couple of squirts of cold water have shocked some reality into her. Although, to be fair, I don't know how long it takes the Department of Agriculture to follow up reports of unlicensed apiary and I'm not even sure which agency regulates hounds of the Baskervilles, that may be still to come. And yeah, ripe stars, I guess that is the lesson that was needed for the neighbor to finally learn that she should not peep into other people's houses. Have you ever had a neighbor that was way too nosy like the person in this story? Let us know in the comments and please also tell us what you did with that person in case you did anything. Either way, thank you very much for watching, I hope to see you again tomorrow.